people don't want to hear about, a, you know, a grown man, a, an almost 40 year old man complaining about titles and tiaras. It's really hard to digest and it's not very relatable for the American audience. Someone who has tried to unpick this is Kinsey Schofield. She's an American royal journalist and host of the To Die For Daily podcast. Uh, we thought we'd get an American perspective because there was this Anderson Cooper interview on CBS as well. Uh, and I asked her what she made of the two interviews together. Well, I mean, my first takeaway is this idea that there are no royal racists when you're talking to ITV, but when you're talking to Anderson Cooper and you're going over the reasons why your family rejected your wife, one of the reasons you specifically list is her race. He says that maybe it's because she's black, biracial, a divorced woman, and an American actress. And so, of course, I get on American television and the first thing they ask me is, is the royal family racist? I've been asked this question for the last, what, two, almost three years now. And it puts you in such an uncomfortable position, especially when Harry goes and tells his UK audience that that's not ever what he said. And that this is just a narrative that has been created by the British press. I'm sorry I'm so hostile. <laughs> So, so, the British, so the British press is to blame. But in America, uh, on CBS, he's basically said... Uh, Race could be a factor, which is which is what Absolutely. which is what emerged from the Oprah interview as well. Yes, sir. That is exactly what he said. And of course, that puts me in such an uncomfortable position as a royal commentator, because if I call him a liar, then I'm told that I'm racist. Um, and I don't and I really, truly don't believe that the royal family is racist. So I'm not, not even going to entertain that conversation. He's also very very critical of Camilla in this American interview, in this 60 Minutes interview, refers to her as the villain and talks about her, her strategy and her really scheming to become the queen consort, um, which if you follow the royal family, there are elements, you know, I do remember hearing about Camilla leaking stories about Diana, but I have never heard about Camilla leaking stories about Harry or Meghan. By the time that Harry was a teenager and there were really talks about her becoming Charles's wife, um, she was over it. She was overwhelmed by the negative attention. She won If she could have just lived off in the country with her animals, she would have. It was Charles's team that really um, created this PR spike, this positive rebranding for Camilla. It wasn't Camilla scheme in the background. And so just so interesting how there are two different stories playing out here tonight on the same night. So really what you're saying, because again, in the Bradbury interview, there seems to be this sense that he wants to talk about how he's got a good relationship with his, his stepmom. There's no real problem there. Again, there's a sort of a British audience and an American audience and, and, and two strategies for, for, for each one. Absolutely. That's exactly what you're hearing. Um, and so th it's just interesting to kind of see both play out and to try to juggle them because I, you know, doing talking to you, talking to the American audience, it's kind of maddening. Uh, and tell us how big, how big a deal is the Anderson Cooper interview? I know he's doing uh, a Good Morning America late, later today. How, you know, it's a big day in America, you know, this at the end of the football season, there's lots of other stuff going on. Um, how big a thing is Harry, in your view, in America today? Well, he's, it's morbid curiosity. I mean, we the Americans love the royal family. We love the royal family because of the glamour, because of that dignified silence. And to see somebody sway from that is obviously really, um, I mean, I guess it's really interesting. Uh, that's why I say it's kind of the morbid curiosity, because you're like, I know that this is not what attracts me to this family. It's interesting that he's doing something different. Um, but I, I don't know if he's necessarily as loved as he was, I'd even say a year ago, you know, to be honest with you, we're dealing, we're, we're looking at a potential recession. We're dealing with inflation. Um, strikes are on the horizon. Our immigration is out the roof. And, um, uh, people don't want to hear about, uh, you know, a grown man, a, an almost 40 year old man complaining about titles and tiaras. It's really hard to digest and it's not very relatable for the American audience. Do you think the book will do well, though? Because as you say, there is the, there's been the whole crownification of, uh, of, of the British monarchy where America sort of loves the crown as well. And therefore that, that's even increased interest further. Do you think there's an appetite to consume the book? Absolutely. I think the book is going to, because I have people that don't love Harry. I, I have a podcast about the royal family and I have people messaging me saying, I can't stand him, but I bought the book so I can talk about it. So there's definitely um, an audience, you know, whether you like him or not, you, you are, you admire the family. You're curious about the drama. You're going to purchase the book. Is there a single detail that you've heard from Harry over the last, uh, what, what is it, 12 hours that, that's, that lingers in your mind? What's the one thing he said that sticks in your mind? 
Well, I thought it was really unfair for him to discuss William the way he did. You know, he talks about William going through the tunnel in the same fashion that he did at the same speed, trying to get a sense of what their mother's last moments were like. You know, I feel like that's okay, Harry, if that's a, a story you want to share about your own experience. But it's unfair to say that William did that too. Well, you know, that's, you know, he's, he also talked about how William did not want Charles to marry Camilla. It's okay if you want to share your story story, Harry. It is yours to share. And this, you know, you have pursued a different path, but it's not fair to share your brothers. And I think that that's really what has eaten at me over the last few hours. I just feel like it's so cruel to do because he knows that his brother is not in a position to respond. There we go. That's Kinsey Schofield, American royal journalist and host of the To Die For Daily podcast. And the story that was in the Sunday Times yesterday and in the paper again today is very much that William is not going to respond and uh, he wants to sort of keep calm and carry on. Uh, we have Emma, has our producer, has sent us a picture of William with a beard mm. from 2008. And, and he looks good. Quite dashing. Yes. He, he's very much improved by having some extra hair yeah. on his face. So maybe... Looks good. So maybe he shouldn't have shaved it off, maybe. But I, I don't oh, know what well, Harry's... He told he had to. Yeah. Wonder why. It's funny, isn't it, how these things are, like, frowned upon? Yeah. Anyway. They should, shouldn't be, should they? The Duke of Kent. Doesn't he... Who's the Duke of Kent? I don't know. So you know Princess Michael of Kent? Yeah. Yeah. yeah go on. So her husband, the Duke of Kent... Yes. Oh, my God. I don't know anything about the royal family, I'm we're afraid. Not, we're not brilliant. I'm on shaky always. ground here. Pretty sure he has a beard. Yeah, I think a beard should be a beard should be massively encouraged. Oh, it, you partic- would. Particularly if you have an emotional support beard like Prince Harry and me. <laughs> an ESB. Yeah. We're brothers in beards together. <laughs>